uh, over there. Uh, it's been uh, not too long that KDM has been focusing on uh, MotoGP, and we've had uh, three very good seasons, as many of you would have uh, seen. We've got a whole lot of uh, podium finishes, and our races have been doing very well, including in the current uh, season. So, encouraged by that, uh, we asked ourselves, how do we bring this racing pedigree and this racing? It's something that uh, touches uh, eight cities. There have been about 250 races, over a thousand racers uh, who have been all KTM customers have come participated in the races. Now, it's not just about race, it's also about coaching, it's also about bringing in the best, and I think that's what drives us. And it has to be done in the most professional, in the most international manner. So this is where we as KTM brought in a lot of our international learnings and abilities. So to start with, uh, uh, Jeremy McWilliams who's also there with us right now and I'll soon be inviting him up uh, to speak with all of you. So Jeremy, really lucky and uh, privileged to have him with us. He's an ex MotoGP racer and he has been working with uh, KTM for a very long time uh, on various uh, initiatives perfecting our bikes. So Jeremy is somebody who understands the race format and KTM bikes extremely well. Uh, he's, Jeremy has been the race director, uh, guiding us on the entire format right from day one. Uh, and we've got some great lucrative prizes, but I'll let you just talk about that uh, in a bit. I think first and foremost, uh, the races have happened on company provided bikes. So, Customers have different bikes, different conditions, different CC, some of them are reluctant. There's an issue of transporting. We've taken care of all those issues. So wherever we have gone in the, in the eight cities, they have raced on the latest RC390s, the GP edition that we launched the some months back, which is the beauty that you see over here uh, on the screen. There are no modifications that have been done uh, in terms of performance. There's a few things uh, here and there more from safety, but technically the bikes are exactly the stock bikes and the customers have been on them. Because the bike is such, the RC390 is by far the most advanced bike in its segment for uh, track performances. It's something uh, which comes with a motorcycle traction control, it's got a fantastic cornering ABS, it's got a quick shifter. The mass of the bike has been reduced versus its uh, generation 1 uh, sibling. There is a Supermoto uh, ABS mode and the engine is uh, the same CrossFit 373cc DOLC uh, liquid cooled uh, engine. Uh, Java is a 7 time uh, national uh, INMRC champion. Again he is somebody who has been working with KTM for a long time. Uh, he runs a, a team called Gusto Racing and again all his racers race on the RC390s. So again, Jeva is somebody who understands racing as well as uh, KTM uh, motorcycles extremely well. And that's what, uh, like I was mentioning, uh, we have gone to eight cities and touched more than 1000 racers who have participated. So let's just take a look at this video which quickly captures what the RC Cup has been all about. At each of these sessions, there, where there were uh, uh, coaching given out by Jadwaj and his team uh, on the track as well as in the classroom session, uh, they did multiple uh, time lapse uh, between uh, the sessions and going back and executing it on the track. Uh, those are the dates how each of these uh, races uh, took place. And uh, I mean, just some uh, great fun facts. But uh, we've had over about a thousand racers and uh, overall they've covered uh, more than 85,000 kilometers on the track during this event. So the bikes you see running right now are the same which have been used across these uh, selection rounds. Total 720 man hours of training that has gone into it. Uh, what we got from there were the top uh, 10 racers from each city. So that's about 8 cities, top 10 racers, which means the top 80 guys. And I think the statistic below gives a good idea of the consistency and how close they've all been to each other. The nearest gap 
between the first and the last amongst the 10 from a particular city was about 0.9 seconds and the farthest was about 4 seconds so even you know in the maximum gap from one city has been only 4 seconds from the number one to the last one so that's been the high level of competition that each of the cities have uh, thrown up the stage two is what's happened uh, yesterday uh, sorry, uh, Friday and yesterday and actually completed uh, today morning. There were some weather challenges yesterday, which has been a full day of race academy over here at MMRT. Uh, it's groomed the uh, racers, got them more familiar with this track. They had a qualifying round yesterday and which concluded today morning. And from the 80, the top 20 are the ones who qualified for the finals. And those are the guys who you heard who were racing outside right now while we were uh, speaking. So these are the top uh, 20 qualified racers. Uh, I mean, we'll provide you the detail. I'll not get into calling each one's uh, names. But uh, as you can see, of course, there are a fair number who come from south and around because we do have a lot of tracks over here. But then there are people who are coming from as far as Odisha, the people coming in from Mumbai, the people coming in from Latur, the people coming in from Delhi. So we've got races coming in from a whole lot of uh, places. So this is where uh, we are right now at the stage three, uh, where there will be a series of three races. Uh, what's happening right now is the second race. Uh, there will be one more race uh, that will happen. Hopefully you'll be able to catch it live. Uh, we should be done uh, by then. And out of those uh, three races, the top three guys, would be crowned the champions uh, for this uh, final. So, Mr. Leko, take a look at this video about uh, what uh, this event is going to be, um, which is uh, coming in from the race that's happened today. So, it's, it's like the, from the first race, this is what uh, has gone live, and uh, our customers from across the country are seeing this live footage. Uh, I requested the team to like you know, put it together so that all of you can get a flavor of how it's getting broadcast uh, across the country right now. Especially at the corners. That's the top three. Navneet Kumar, Abhishek Kastri, and our oh, What it is from Navneet Kumar? I must say this. Job well done. Take a bow, Navneet Kumar. Fantastic racing. He's clearly showing his dominance in this man. season finale. He's clearly the prime favorite to take that 2023 championship home. You know, the cup's all about. Uh, the winners, uh, as the video talked about, uh, they're in for a triple treat. I think they, they, first of all, they all three of them uh, get to visit our headquarters in Australia. Uh, they visit uh, the KTM Motor Hall. Uh, with, the KTM Motor Hall is uh, right next to the KTM office over there. Uh, and as many of you would have read about it, it houses uh, the entire legacy of KTM bikes uh, showcases KTM technology. It's got the actual bikes on which many of our racers have won, including the suits, etc. It's like anybody who loves motorcycles, for him, that's like really the mecca to visit. It's an amazing interactive uh, museum of uh, KTM bikes and racing prowess. Uh, they get to watch a MotoGP live at the Red Bull Ring. And uh, more than anything else, I think they are the best, and I think they require probably the best of the coaching they can get. And they will get to train uh, with Jeremy uh, over there uh, in Austria uh, itself. So, folks, uh, that's it from my side. That's what this championship is all about. Uh, extremely happy, thankful to all of you and the media fraternity which has supported us uh, through this entire event from the time we kicked it off in Jan. It's actually been a, a fairly um, a big, challenging step for us to get into something like this and do at this scale. 
of course, whenever you start, you always wonder how it would go, but we are really happy. The teams put a lot of work around it uh, in terms of making it happen, taking it across the country. And uh, we are uh, waiting to see who wins uh, the race uh, finally. So thank you very much. Uh, that's it from my side uh, on the presentation. Uh, I think we'll open it up for a Q&A, but I would also request uh, Jeremy if he's around. So I'd like to invite the participants, like uh, having insurance and uh, other things. So, all the riders are expected to have FMSA license. So FMSA license uh, covers uh, with, uh, comes with an insurance, covered insurance for this sport with special risk insurance. So um, that's how uh, the license is, uh, insurance is covered. When we are doing the uh, local level one, it's not with different cities, we ensure that they are they have the personal cash and we cover for them. Top three riders, the top three ride racers. Uh, I think the prize is really big. Uh, they visit Austria, they visit, they interact with our, uh, our team over there. They get trained uh, with uh, Jeremy. They have a session with him over there. They visit the MotoGP uh, at the Red Bull Arena. They get to visit the KTM Motor Hall. So they get a very good intensive, uh, you know, uh, experience of uh, racing and of uh, KTM. Uh, we are definitely very encouraged to continue this. But like uh, for every big initiative, I think you know when we conclude it, and then we would look at uh, reviewing the entire thing. Uh, get our learnings and take our final decisions. But uh, certainly we are extremely inclined to continue and make this into an animal property. Uh, the rest of the uh, racers who, 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 who came top 10. So all of them have undergone uh, track session over the last two days. So all the top 10, which is about 80 racers who came here uh, for uh, the prelims uh, since the last two days and today being the third day. So yesterday and day before, they have undergone intensive uh, coaching and training sessions with both Jabraj and Jeremy. And I will pass it on to them in case they would like to share any more details on the kind of uh, training, you know, or tips and all they have gone through. Sorry? So for the balance, uh, they, well, I mean, we definitely would encourage them to come and, you know, engage more with us as a, as a brand. Uh, and you definitely keep uh, close touch with them. And then let's see how things go on from there. But we have not formed up anything uniquely specific as such. But they've all undergone a fair amount of training till now, till what they've reached. Uh, this question is for Jeremy. Uh, so what kind of experience have you had with Indian racers? So, and can you share any feedback about how fast we really are? <laughs> The fastest in years for sure. I, I have to say that working with these kids gives me enormous pleasure because they are all very talented, uh, very focused, very driven. Um, like all racers, I mean, they're, they're very, very typical of of every racer I've ever worked with. And I've worked with racers in Thailand and uh, Malaysia. We did an RC Cup in Malaysia. Uh, I was part of that. Visited that over the whole championship. Um, these racers are kind of like all those young racers that I've met back then and uh, it, it, you know, we, we just watch them race on the second race, they're how close it is at, at the front, you know, the top four or five are covered by a blanket really uh, and I think this experience will obviously help them improve and develop in the future and what we're going to show them in Austria, um, what we have on track planned for them the special VIP hospitality that they get in the KTM stand is something that only very few ever get to experience. It's something very, very special. Right where that stand is in, in, in the Red Bull ring is is the best part of the, of the circuit. So I think all of that uh, and the motor hall experience will, will definitely blow them away, but equally keep them within our brand. And for the future, this is the right time to be bringing and nurturing young riders as you uh, are planning to bring a MotoGP to India, uh, it's the best time for them. And of course, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to help them and, and develop and in, in, in onto that stage in the future. Just to add to that, do you see an Indian MotoGP races uh, happening anytime soon? Indian MotoGP, uh, Indian, Indian MotoGP race. 
Well, we haven't got any at the moment. We've got some uh, Asian riders in Moto3 that have developed all the way through, and as I said, in the RC Cup, uh, of, of, and riders that have moved from MotoGP in the World Superbike. Yeah, I, I, I watch most races, I see most things, but um, I can't think of any Indians that riders at the moment that are, are, are doing anything other than Java's sons, and he can tell you a little bit about what they're doing, but it's quite impressive what, what they've already achieved in their short time over in Europe, because it is quite a different style when you move to Europe and taking on a European style and living in an, another country and all of those things that go with it. It's, it's a very, very big upheaval for, for young uh, guys, but what Java's been telling me about his young sons is impressive and obviously holds uh, great things for the future. Uh, we would like to make this like a regular property. Uh, yes, we would like to make it an annual property. But uh, we, like I was mentioning, we'll also go back and evaluate how it works and you know to what extent what should be the right frequency if you need to make any change in the format. But uh, given a choice, we would rather uh, have it run on the best bikes or the biggest CC bikes that you know we are making. We make it open to all KTM customers, even if they get, even if they own 125cc bikes. So, you know, because we are providing the bikes and we're giving them that experience. So it's open to all KTM customers for that matter. But we think that to get the best uh, output on a, on a racetrack, we've got to provide the bike which is best suited for that. So our leaning would be more towards keeping it with our top of line. Do you have any that only getting, like, uh, yeah, it's only for uh, KTM bike owners, or unless there is a blood relation, you know, like it's owned by a person's brother, then it's a different matter. Then we look at those cases on exceptional basis. Uh, of course, they have to have a minimum 18 years of age. Um, below that, no, there is none. All of us in this room are welcome to join in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the OXP I'm going to give you this idea. Something? Competitive in off-road adventure segment? Uh, we, are at, uh, we are looking at an adventure rally. Uh, there is an international KTM format of the adventure rally. And we are right now working and evaluating and trying to see that can we get the adventure rally to India. Uh, and that's something which can be, you know, a format which would be learning and as well as it will have a competitive angle to it. So that could be one of the things. But, uh, you know, again, we've got to take a few things at a time. Is there any possibility that we will get our hands on the race effect of our season in the next edition? Uh, are, you, are you talking about uh, uh, the ones that are racing over here or are you talking about the RC16s? Yes. Uh, well, uh, it's not something which we have as such. Uh, I know that uh, Java's team uh, races on our season. I'm sure they must have made the right, uh, the requisite modifications on that. So, I mean, if you're really keen, I think uh, you know that the, the question has to go to somebody else. Uh, but uh, if there is a huge level of keenness that comes up from our customers on uh, something like that, I mean, it's something which we could look at. Uh, but as of now, uh, I mean, we'd rather a race, and it was a, it was a considered choice of, because finally, like, you know, this is, these are the bikes that people can also buy outside. So we want to keep that consistency. But Jeva, I don't know if you want to offer your bikes to them. No, I think uh, when we have a, giving you such a big platform, uh, modifying the bike to a race track uh, is not going to be that easy. No? And uh, as you guys know, once uh, modification starts, then there is no limit. Yeah, but we will also open one more door for the customers. Like, they will also have an idea about what they want on their own things. Completely agree, but uh, I think maybe we just started on this process. Maybe on, as we proceed in a couple of years, maybe we are going to do that, then maybe we can have a pro category. Uh, which uh, we can uh, come out those kind of thoughts. But uh, so at this point in time, 
I think it's, it may come out of the risky also. Yeah. Any plans for any Uh, we are, I mean, if you are, we are looking at forming any factory racing team in India right now. So, uh, not as KTM as a company uh, or as Bajaj Auto, uh, we are not looking at entering a team uh, from our side as of now. I think we are more committed at providing uh, the best of experiences for our customers. Uh, factory racing is important and I think that's where uh, the KTM Global team uh, works on the largest of formats. But what is uh, more important for us is uh, providing the best of experiences to customers, opening up opportunities for them. So we are focused a lot more in that space. What is the RC company and platform to launch back to the Having a factory So I, I would uh, say that to us, RC Cup is a place where uh, some of the best of the talent, you know, they get a chance to showcase. And uh, then, of course, you know, doors can open up and they can, you know, it's, many of them would also identify their own passion and their own uh, dreams uh, from here. Uh, as of now, we would let it progress for them the way they might want to go ahead with. This track, this is the only track that I've visited. Uh, hopefully, I'll come back again in the future. But this is, this little track, well, it's actually not that small. It's, it's it's one of the, you know, it must be the longest track uh, other than your F1 track or MotoGP track. But yeah, this circuit, the draft circuit is in really good condition. Uh, technical, it's got a little bit of everything. Uh, it's a lot of fun to ride. Uh, very well organized. The organizers of the World and Race Direction uh, watching how that unfolded. Uh, very professional outfit and a lovely circuit to, to run on. I was lucky enough to get some time on the track. And uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's right up there uh, equally with most of the European tracks that I've ridden on. Uh, so last question, anyone? Yeah.